Hey everybody, it's Nurse Eric. Namaste. Yeah, I said it. Namaste. And when I say steak, I mean like, like, oh no, that's short. Like tri tip. Okay, that kind of steak. So I want to give an update, and I will soon. I'll do a six month update where I will go over how the holidays went on the carnivore diet, how the post holidays went with me uh, trying salt, water, and beef only. I added eggs to that. Even with that, I'll, I'll have to get into it. I'll have to get into it. Um, didn't work out so well for me, so I kind of want to spend a little time on that on its own because I, I think there are some things that we talk about in the carnivore community that may or may not work for everybody. So I, I'm going to talk about why it didn't work for me. Uh, but today I want to talk about what I eat in a day. So, i got all the stuff around here. Alright, I went to the farmer's market and I got, uh, I got a bunch of stuff from the farmer's market, so I'll show you that. But I'll kind of go through, kind of, on, on a daily basis, how do I maintain my carnivore diet? And what does it look like? And why I choose certain things, okay? So, uh, let's start with breakfast, number one. Cheers. Well, I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit here. All right, let's bring this a little closer. There you are. All right. Okay. So, uh, cheers uh, to the morning, to the day, to the afternoon, to the evening, whatever it is for you. Um, cheers. And have a, I hope you're, you're starting your day feeling excited about the day or you're in the middle of your day and you're enjoying your day or at your end of the day and you feel great about your day, because that's how I'm pretty much feeling every day. That's why I'm sharing what I'm doing, because this has been life-changing for me, uh, trying the carnivore diet. So, uh, the first thing I, I eat on a, or I consume on a regular basis is coffee. That's one of the only plants that goes in my body right now, and I use heavy cream. So, um, let me talk about the heavy cream real quick. It's either, either most, <laughs> this is horrible, most brands of heavy cream I've noticed either have carrageenan in them or, uh, what is it, um, some kind of something, guar and gum or something like that. They put additives in to make a extremely thick, homogenous <laughs> liquid food um, into how can you make it more homogenous? How can you make it more thick? It's already thick. And why are you adding stuff to my food, which should be pure, natural, whole? Um, I don't understand it, so that bothers me. Anyway, so coffee and heavy cream. Um, eggs, okay? We raise chickens here uh, on our little urban farm, so I've got an unending supply of chicken eggs. Okay, um, I a lot of times like to have my eggs with bacon. This is a no sugar, uncured bacon, not preserved, uh, no nitrates, no antibiotics. It's about as good as you can get. Um, a lot of bacon company, you know, food manufacturers put sugar in their bacon. It's a curing agent. It, makes it taste better because we live in a society that's just completely bombarded with sugar. It's just saturated with sugar. Everything's got to have sugar in it. And it's horrible. Um, sometimes I'll do, and I'll do this, ground beef. This is also from, uh, from my, uh, from my, my dealer, my meat dealer, my, my farmer who lives, uh, his farm is down in Casa Grande, Arizona, and he comes up to my farmer's market. Bam! Lucky guy I am because I get access to it. It's really good. So a lot of times in the morning um, I'll just do some ground beef and then I'll throw some eggs on it. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'll also do different types of sausages if I can find some that aren't made with uh, sugar or not too much sugar. Um, and, and, and that's that's good, you know. Okay, going down the line. Water. I'm drinking lots of water and I, I do like sparkling water. I would say before getting going carnivore, um, one of my favorite drinks was beer. You know, like at the end of the night, you know, after eating a whole food plant-based diet. 
you know, beer is not whole. It's a, it's a processed food, but uh, it, took, it takes the edge off and it kind of just helps me, you know, relax, unwind at night, you know, and now I, now I like the, the taste of bubbly, you know, so that's what's in here. Okay, cool. Next, we have Soleil. Okay, and watch what I'm doing. Did you notice how it was clear first? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little teaching while I explain this. So Soleil is salt water. I use Himalayan pink salt. If you have fake Himalayan pink salt, after all this settles, the water will still be pink. So put in, if you want to know if it's real or not, or if they added color, uh, you know, put some, a little bit of uh, Himalayan salt in the bottom of the jar, and then put some water in it, shake it up, and then let it sit, see what happens, okay? So anyways, the reason why I bring up Soleil is that uh, salt is a very important part of my diet. I will take this, I try and find certain sources of magnesium and uh, an iodine. Um, I'll talk about that in a second, but it's nice. It's nice to have salt when you're on a low carb, ketogenic, carnivore diet, uh, your insulin tends to be low, which means your body does not hold on to as much sodium. So we, we, you know, we tend to waste more sodium than carbohydrate eaters. And Soleil is a great way to replenish that. Now I don't just drink this. So what I'll do is I'll just take this, and I'll just pour a little bit in whatever water I'm drinking, um, you know, and, and that ends up helping out. So that gets my salt uh, content up. And then that leads me to iodine. Okay, so I have a, all I got left of it, the oyster shell. I go to Whole Foods and I get fresh oysters and I, pray, I take them home, I pop them open and I just, bam, they just go down the hatch with a little salt. And they taste really good. I like the way they taste. And that iodine is, is really important. It's really important for thyroid health. Okay, so a lot of people coming into carnivore, you have to realize that Thyroid is a very important organ, and people who go uh, carb-free or zero-carb or carnivore, whatever you want to call it, a lot of times have problems with thyroid issues because the thyroid kind of slows down, okay? So you want to keep your thyroid optimized while you're doing this so you don't have any problems, okay? So oysters are a good way to do that. Um, every once in a while, I'll do some beef liver. It's not my favorite smell in the house. It's not my favorite taste. I do it pretty infrequently, but every once in a while. You know, just uh, just because I think maybe it'll help. If I was a prehistoric human and I was out hunting and gathering, I'd probably be like, because of the way I am, I'd probably like, how do I get the best nutrition? How do I get the best nutrition? Okay, and how do I get the best flavors and best nutrition together? Um, here, let me grab a little of that liver real quick, you know, and every once in a while I do some other organs, I'll try them, but I really just like ribeyes the best and mostly steaks and stews and anything I can put on the grill and roasts and all that kind of stuff. That's like my main thing. Um, but another thing I do, which I think is really, really amazingly delicious. This is the, a food that I never, I, did, I never tasted before going carnivore and now it's like my favorite. It's like if I'm gonna have dessert as a carnivore, um, this is gonna be it, okay? So if you're a carnivore and you have a, a particular uh, carnivore food that you would consider so good that it's dessert, I wanna hear about it, um, pop that in the comments. I do check the comments um, every few days and I always respond, I try and respond to every single one especially if it has a question or something like that or if it's like something that like makes me proud of you guys or if it makes me feel like yes we're on the same team i definitely will get in there and encourage you so if you need some encouragement drop a comment um so here it is marrow uh so i get uh beef marrow bones and this is from uh, 100 percent grass fed that's the best stuff so what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll lightly season these things, pop them in the oven, and when they come out, this marrow is, mwah, mm, it's so good. It really is. Not even a joke. Super good. All right, so let's start going through what I got at the farmer's market today, because you want to see this haul. You want to see uh, 
what I get. So I spent probably, I don't know, 250 today. Uh, and a lot of this will, will last me basically all week. Um, so, you know, if you break that down, that's like $40 a day. 40 something. I'm not doing math right. Never mind that. Okay. Short ribs. Okay, $5 a pound. These are amazing. These are grass fed, grass finished, locally sourced from my guy Mark from Oasis Farms. Oasis Farms, okay? And you want to know which farmer's market I go to? It's the Roadrunner Park, Roadrunner Park Farmer's Market in Phoenix, Arizona. So if you go there, go say hi to Mark, tell him you saw my video, and um, don't eat all the ribeyes. Don't buy all the ribeyes before I get there. That's my only ask, okay? Those are mine. All right, so here we go. Let's see what else we got. Oh yeah, big tri-tip. This is gonna be so good. If y'all haven't had tri-tip, if you're not eating tri-tip on a regular basis, and if you can afford it, highly recommend it. Mm, look at all this fat on the back. Mm, mm, mm. So, yeah, so when you stick this on the grill, and you let that fat drip off, and, that, and the flames start coming up, and you start getting that, that beautiful color, that beautiful, Mmm, grilled taste gets in here and it's so good. Can't even explain it. All right, let's see what else we got. Oh, yes. This is it. Okay. This is why. This is why I bought the uh, the ribeye guy.com. I love ribeyes. I'm gonna turn that into something someday. The ribeye guy. That's it. Okay, because that's what I call myself because I'm actually, I kind of like ribeyes a lot. Like I would eat them every day, every day, okay? They're a little hard to cook. You have to get used to flames. You have to get used to lots of flames and moving it around so that it's not gonna be charred on the outside. You want it to have that nice, beautiful flavor crust, but you don't want it burned. Um, really easy to burn ribeyes. Um, if anybody has a perfect way to make ribeyes, I'd also like to hear that in the comments. What I normally do is I, I use my instant pot and I put it on the sous vide method. I put it on sous vide or I'll stick this in the oven at 250 and I'll just kind of bring it close to temperature. Then I take it out and I let it cool down. Okay, once it's been at the temperature it's supposed to be, it's, it's cooked, right? But now there's no char on it. So I cool it off for a little while, sometimes longer than others. And then I throw it on the grill and I just let those flames kiss them and just make it beautiful and delicious. Ooh, that's my favorite way to eat it. And then I eat it like ribeyes and eggs for breakfast. Right? Let's see what else I got. Sablefish. There's another vendor called Alaskan Pride at the farmer's market and they have all kinds of fish. Today I saw halibut cheeks, uh, $32 a pound. I saw walleye for $24 a pound. I saw, what was it, swordfish and something, oh, ahi tuna, $16 a pound. This is my favorite. I don't even know how many dollars a pound it is because I just said, you know, can I see your sable fish? Because this became one of my favorite, my favorite, my favorite fish. Uh, super good for breakfast, a little butter on it. I forgot to tell you about butter. I eat butter, I eat ghee, um, beef towel, all that kind of stuff. That's how I kind of cook. And mostly when I do spices, it's salt, pepper, garlic, maybe a little onion powder, um, and not a lot. I just put a little bit just for flavor, so that works for me. Okay, so stable fish is good. More rib steaks from JH uh, Farms. Okay, so that's a good one. And they're also that's another. There's another vendor. Um, I buy from both of them, so Oasis Farms and. Uh, it's not, the vendor isn't JH Farms, but there's a, a lady who sells uh, the meat for a couple different um, local Arizona um, farmers, so ranchers and all that kind of stuff. She's got lamb, turkey, chicken, pork, beef, everything, pretty much, you know, if, if, you, can, if you can raise them here in Phoenix, Arizona, or in Arizona, uh, she sells it. Okay, uh, more sable fish. Tenderloin, beef tenderloin. These are a little tiny, okay. These are a little more expensive. 
Okay, so Oasis Farms, they're pricing $23 a pound for uh, for the tenderloin, uh, $19 a pound, I believe, for uh, ribeyes. Um, the tri-tip, I want to say, was maybe 15 and then short ribs, five. More short ribs. All right, and more beef tenderloin. And that pretty much does it. I usually eat in the morning before work, or I'll make the food and then bring it, and then I'll eat it sometime around noon, because I really don't like to eat too early in the morning. And then I tend, like, I work a 12-hour day, I get home at 11 o'clock, I tend to be a little hungry, so I'll snack on something. And my snacks can be um, biltong or beef jerky or anything that I've looked at that's got really low sugar, because a lot of those companies put tons of sugar in their jerkies and their biltongs. Um, I'll just scoop up a little grass-fed butter, I'll go to the refrigerator and just chug some heavy cream because I'm just trying to get my, you know, my body like satiated and kind of like digesting something so it's easier for me to fall asleep. And without the carbohydrates, I'm going to be really honest, uh, sometimes it's a little hard, harder to fall asleep because when I was eating carbs, I could just kind of carb out before I go to bed and that would just zonk me out. I mean, okay, check it out. So Thanksgiving, I'll get... I don't know if I talked about this before, but Thanksgiving, I didn't have all the stuff. All I had was a turkey leg. So I had the, I had the turkey uh, skin, I had the meat, and I had, you know, the fat and all that kind of stuff. And I just, that's what I ate. I ate a huge, huge turkey leg. I felt great. I felt great. I didn't have any issues with, uh, with the tryptophan, nap, you know, the, it's the carbs. So that's why I bring that up. It's the carbs. Carbs help you fall asleep. If you go to a, do a sleep study, uh, if you're like, if you think maybe you have narcolepsy or something like that, you know what they'll tell you to get to like help make sure that if you're gonna have an episode, you're gonna have an episode. They're like eat lots of uh, eat lots of pasta, eat lots of rice, whatever, and then boom, that's gonna make you more more susceptible to falling asleep because what ends up happening, I'll get a little technical with you, is that. Um, uh, I don't know how exactly it works, but something when you eat carbohydrates competes with hypocretin. It's called orexin A. Orexin A is a hormone that is basically part of its job is making you feel alert, alert and awake. So if you're ha if you're having food, if your food is competing with that, and your body's constantly struggling, constantly struggling to put that adrenaline and all those fight or flight, you know the the the, the um, hormones, you know, with the cortisol, all that kind of stuff to try and keep you alert because the, if hypocretin is working well, you're going to feel good. You're going to feel happy. You're going to feel alive. You're going to feel awake, motivated. If hypocretin is, 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 you know, if you're competing with hypocretin, you're going to feel more depressed. You're going to feel slow. You're going to feel fo fog, brain fog, loss of focus, loss of motivation, all that kind of stuff. So don't do it. Don't do it. Carbohydrates are an unnecessary part of the Human diet, except for babies. Um, I hear a lot of people say, oh, humans don't need any carbohydrates ever. And guess what? Uh, yeah, there's carbohydrates in uh, mother's milk. And that's an important part of a growing baby. And I would say if carbohydrates are appropriate for anyone, um, it's probably the little rugrats who walk around and they pick up everything off the floor and they put it in their mouth. Uh, they probably would have, you know, uh, back in prehistoric times, uh, not have that opportunity because they would have stayed much closer to the mom like all the time. Um, but you know, maybe mom was the gatherer and dad was the hunter and you know, she's out gathering and you know, he drops, uh, you know, a little blueberry here and there. Ever read that book, Blueberries for Sale? Kids are always looking for, they just want to eat them. They just want to pick them up. They just want to pick up the fruits and eat them. They're sweet, they're tasty. We have the taste buds for them. They probably had some role in evolution. Um, obviously it did because our ancientest ancestors before our really, really uh, meat dominant, um, you know, most recent human an ancestors uh, probably ate a lot of fruit in the jungle and that kind of thing. So anyways, that's it for today. Namaste. Thank you for checking me out. Uh, I am Nurse Eric and uh, one last thing. Should I change the name of my channel to Namaste?
because I kind of bought a, a domain that would work really well for that. Um, but you can also check me out on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook as namasteak.me. Uh, M-E is for motivation and education because that's what I'm trying to here to do. I'm trying to motivate, educate, and start getting into coaching. So you can, if you're interested in coaching, send me an email to namasteak.me at gmail.com. Not too hard. Once, once like you get namasteak in your brain and you realize me dot me is about me, it's about you because you're a me. Because you, when you say me, you mean you. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> um, motivation, education, that's what I'm here for. I'm not trying to give medical advice. I'm not trying to, I, I don't have any association with any nutritional or dietetic association. I just, this is the way I do things. And if you want to know what I do and what's working for me, follow me along. See you in the next one. Namaste. Cheers.